we are going to take up the next topic which is on independent structure problem here a b c d is a vertical is a very rigid bar so a b c d is a very rigid bar it is supported by a steel wire it is supported by a steel wire b e copper wire c f so the copper wire c f and pin jointed at a as shown in figure so it is pin jointed at the point a a vertical load of 12 kg acts at d so the vertical load is acting at the point d determine stresses produced in steel and copper wire so what is the stresses which is going to be developed at the point at this steel wire and also at the copper wire and also deflection at the free end so which is at the free end that is what will going to be the deflection that we need to find out so here the given part is area of cross section of the steel bar which is 400 mm square area of copper it is 600 mm square and h modulus of steel which is 2 into 10 to the power of 5 newton per mm square and h modulus of copper which will be 1.2 into 10 to the power of 5 newton per mm square so now here once the load is acting on this so naturally we have a load which is acting at this point so then what happens is this will be like a cantilever beam suppose when the load is acting at this point which is being jointed at a then because of due to this load what happens the beam will going to try to deflect the beam will try to deflect on this position now this will going to be the position so once you have this so here this distance which will work to be a b c and d so which is at a distance of 200 mm this is at 300 mm and this is at 200 mm so because due to this we will going to have a deflection which will going to be take place on this so this is going to be the initial position of the beam due to the application of load due to the application of load at this particular point d which is 12 kN the beam will try to deflect this will act like a cantilever beam so naturally what will going to be the deflection at this point and also what will going to be the deflection at this point so this we will going to consider as delta s and this will be delta cu that is delta of power or delta and then this is at delta d then the letter delta x will be equal to the deflection of the steel wire let delta s will be equal to deflection of the steel wire steel wire then similarly delta cu will be deflection of the copper wire then delta d will be deflection at the free end at the free end now so here we have this this will be something similar to the similar triangles so here from the similar triangles what we can get is from from the similar triangle principle from the similar triangle principle so what is that which will be equal to delta s by 200 will be equal to delta cu by 500 equal to delta d by 700 so that will be equal to delta s by 200 equals delta cu by 500 equals delta d by 700 that will be equal to that is so if you have this delta s by 2 equal to delta cu by 5 that is equal to 
delta v by 7. So now, when we compare these two, suppose we are considering only these two, so delta c will be equal to, so this is phi by 2 into delta s, that will be equal to 2.5 into delta s. So this is one equation. Similarly, if you are considering this, delta s by 2 will be equal to delta d by 7. So then therefore, delta d will be equal to 7 by 2 into delta s. Therefore, delta d will be equal to 3.5 delta s. So these are the two expressions we are going to get from the similar triangle principle. So now what we want is, now the deflection which we are going to consider. So once we now we are considering the deflection. So that is delta Pc, suppose now we will going to consider the first equation. That is delta S will be equal to 2.5 into delta S. So what is that Pc is nothing but that is Pc into length of power PCU, we can consider as PCU will be equal to PCU, PCU into length of copper divided by area of copper into Young's modulus of copper, which will be equal to 2.5 into PS into length of steel divided by area of steel into Young's modulus of steel. So then what happens is, similarly we have delta D which will be, so that means we have PC which we don't know, PCU into length of copper is 400 divided by area of copper which is given to be 600 into Young's modulus of copper which is 1.2 into 10 to the power of 5. So that will be equal to 2.5 into PS that I need to find out into length of steel which is 250 mm which is given there divided by area of steel which is 600 into steel is 2 into 10 to the power of 5. So what I am going to get for this? So that will be equal to Therefore, Pc will be equal to 1.40625 Ps. So, this is the load on copper with respect to steel. Thank you. Now, because of this, now we are going to find out the equilibrium. So, here what happens is now as the load is applied on the member, as the load is applied on the member at this point, so this is going to have a cantilever effect, so it will go to bend like this. So taking the moments about the point A, if you are considering the taking the moments about the point A, here, taking the moments of, about the point A, moments about the point A, point A. Now, here 12 into 700, so 12 into 700 will be equal to, so now as the load is applied on this number, so what happens to the tension? The tension will be going to be acting in the upper direction. So that is basically because this is trying to move in this direction because the P e is, because at the point E the string is fixed. So naturally to keep the body in equilibrium, it will try to act in the upper direction which will work to be the value of Ps. Similarly, when you are acting at this down, again you are going to have at the copper which will work to be Pcu. So what happens now? The sum of the moments on the clockwise direction will be equal to the sum of the moments on the active uh, on the clockwise direction. So as we know that the PS is acting upwards, since it is hinged at this point, so PS force into the perpendicular distance, 
that is ps into 200 which is going to be acting in the counter clockwise direction so that will be equal to ps into 200 then again plus why because again pcu is acting in the upward direction so we are going to have the anti clockwise movement which will be equal to pcu into 500 so that will be equal to that is 2 ps 2 into ps plus 5 into pc is equal to 84 so answer the question then so now we are going to apply this so that is so now here 2 into ps plus 5 into what is pc pc is nothing but 1.40625 1.40625 into ps will be equal to 84 therefore tension in the steel wire tension in the steel wire ps will be equal to ps will be equal to 9.3 kilo newton so this is the tension then similarly tension in the copper wire will be equal to similarly tension in the copper wire tension in the copper wire in the copper wire which is pc will be equal to 1.40625 into PS. So that will be equal to 1.40625 into PS is 9.3. Therefore, PC will be equal to 30.08. So now this is the uh, condition for the load which is acting as a number. Now we need to find out what is the stresses produced in the steel and copper wire. The stresses in the steel and copper wire will be equal to now. What is stress? Stress is load by the area of cross section. So naturally, we have PC and we have this P of copper and we have PS that is load at steel or the tension in the steel. So now, stress induced in the steel wire, stress induced in the steel wire. That is sigma s will be equal to ps by area of steel which will be equal to 9.3 kilo newton that is 9.3 into 10 to the power of 3 divided by area of steel is 400 which will be equal to 23.25 newton per m square therefore sigma s will be equal to 23.25 newton per m square so this is the stress in steel similarly stress in copper wire stress in copper wire in copper wire that is sigma cu will be equal to pcu by acu therefore that will be equal to 13.08 kilo newton so 13.08 into 10 to the power of 3 divided by area of copper is 600 therefore sigma cu will be equal to 21.8 newton per mm square so this is the stresses in copper now deflection at the free end we need to find out so since the deflection at the free end which is delta d or now we will going to find out the deflection at the free end. So to find out the deflection at the free end, to find the deflection at the free end D. So to find out the deflection at the free end D, so what is the requirement? Deflection at the free end 
deflection at the free end D. Free end D. So the requirement is here delta H D or delta D will be equal to 3.5 into delta S. So what is delta S? So we don't know delta S, now we need to find out delta S. Therefore, deflection deflection of steel wire which is delta S will be equal to sigma S into LS divided by S. So that will be equal to sigma S we know that is 23.25 into 250 divided by 2 into 10 to the power 5 which will be equal to 0 0.0 2906 m which will be delta s yes. then we need to find out we need to find out deflection at the copper deflection of copper wire deflection of copper wire that is delta cu or delta cu will be equal to 2.5 delta S that will be equal to delta C U will be equal to 2.5 into delta S which will be equal to 0 0.02906 which will be equal to 0 0.072666 mm so that will be delta C U now once you have the delta C U also now we can find out the delta L D or delta D that is the deflection at the free end which will be equal to 3.5 delta L D will be equal to 3.5 into 0 0.02906 therefore delta L D will be equal to 0 0.10172 mm so this is going to be the final answer